two centres here uh, who, that are focused on, on cloud research and development, one in Galway, one in Belfast. The reasons we chose Ireland to locate those particular uh, centres uh, were, were specifically because we could actually get the, um, the talent and the um, graduates from the universities that have, has been alluded to here today, um, and we can staff and still can staff those research centres with, um, with Irish graduates. And going back to the sort of earlier discussion of the panel this morning, it sort of it struck me that I know there was a lot of discussion around um, what we had and what we didn't have and what will happen with cloud. But for me, the opportunity with cloud is very much the new frontiers and the new areas we can, we can develop into. So for example, in the centres that we have here, we're, we're developing global solutions um, servicing, you know, international, HP international customers from, from the Irish base. And I think that's the real opportunity. I mean, this economy, it's bread and butter, has always been exporting. Uh, and also uh, an area where I know there's a lot of discussion uh, all the time around cooperation tax, but actually the real, the real um, area that we, we look at is the, in, the environment for research and development. And actually the IDA offering and the Ireland offering, if you like, from a research and development um, perspective is actually very strong. Now, last year, Matt, we actually did a piece of work internally and we benchmarked Ireland against other competing geographies that we would be competing with for HP investment. And uh, in the area of research and development, Ireland still features very, very strongly. Well, I think we're, you know, we've got an awful lot of components already in place. Um, we've got a fantastic uh, telecoms infrastructure, both, uh, you know, certainly from a transatlantic perspective, back into Europe and down into Asia. Sorry, do you think the telecoms infrastructure is good enough? Yeah. Because that is a big complaint Absolutely, a lot of the time yeah. no. from people. It Certainly, in yeah, well, so, so, correct. So if you're looking at the, at the greater Dublin area and you look at the international clients looking at Ireland as a location for um, hosting infrastructure to get an access to European clients, it's fantastic. So from that point of view, it, it's okay. If you're looking at location in a data center regionally, then you may have a different uh, question. As regards just currently where the data centers are located, it's fine. Um, as regards the data center operators, we've got uh, world-class facilities, world-class infrastructure. There's a track record of um, you know, 10, 12, 15 years now of data center providers in Ireland. And we've got some of the top-class technology companies already in Ireland with all their European data center headquarters in their own right, but also as the independent providers like ourselves. So we have a very, very strong calling card when we go out to potential clients to what Ireland has to offer, and all the things that we talk, we always talk about it, about you know the the the, the you know uh, young talented workforce, our tax regime, our um, you know infrastructure, or telecoms or expertise, and um, that's all that's all forms part of that that conversation. The energy, the, the 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 costs, you know, it's it's a whole it's a whole picture rather than just one component. I think in, in terms of the security of supply consideration tied to energy, it's important to frame that there's not a, a dependency on any single energy source. So whilst um, energy prices over here may be wholly determined by UK gas prices, um, you have a very healthy mix of um, generation technologies that are um, and, and the projections, I mean, you have a self-imposed target of 40% renewables by 2020. Currently, that figure is sitting at around 18%. And I think it's also important to frame that the renewable contribution can't, certainly in the case of wind, entirely displace the, the more traditional forms of degeneration. The Irish proposition is not that dissimilar to that of uh, Finland in terms of the mix of technologies. You've got about 20% hydro uh, in a Finnish context, 20%, 22% nuclear, um, and then the, the more traditional thermal and others. In a country where you have the geography that lends itself to um, the hydro proposition, that's all well and good. You need the, the potential energy to um, make that a viable proposition. So uh, I think the, uh, the generation adequacy uh, proposition for Ireland is certainly uh, much health healthier than it is um, for the UK in the short to medium term. I think we're heading towards a position where our renewables are getting an awful lot better. Um, so we're, we're certainly competing 
uh, we compete, Ireland competes across Europe with regards to uh, looking to host uh, cloud service providers and opportunities, international opportunities. And the feedback certainly that I get um, when people come over to Ireland, obviously we're looking at one grid, uh, at, uh, which is delivered by ESP Networks and AirGrid, um, is that you know, it's a very, very robust network. Um, it's uh, highly resilient. Um, and its uptime is, 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 can compete with anybody's uh, uptime in, in the world with regards to its, uh, you know, its capability. There is a, an emphasis at the moment in, in, uh, in the IoT sector and in the uh, uh, university sector to try and produce this uh, extra resource as quick as possible. So we are doing, and the government is supporting, initiatives in the one-year conversion courses, whether it's a graduate diploma or a higher diploma in information technology, or a master's degree in the new and emerging technologies like the cloud computing areas and the data science uh, areas as well. But I think it doesn't just stop there, because what Martin has said there and what HP are doing and, and can be replicated right throughout the sector is the universities, unless we double in size, we cannot generate uh, what's required in the short to medium term. And where industry can get involved, and what, what HP have been doing and what uh, other large industries are, are actually doing as well, is getting involved in the training aspect of things. Not just training for their own needs, but they're shaping the education of the next generation as well. So we have collaborative projects going on, not just with, with HP in terms of education, but with, with IBM and uh, uh, in, in Microsoft as well, in terms of, of seeing what the, the sectoral needs are to create the next generation of, of, of educated um, uh, graduates. The world we're in um, in 2012 will be utterly transformed by 2020 in every, in every way. And we are already in the, in the knowledge economy, the knowledge age. Um, fewer than 15% of graduates coming out of university in Ireland have a technical uh, qualification, you know, engineering, IT, science. Um, China produces a million engineering graduates a year. And, uh, when you add all that up, I mean, I think our, our strategy has to be a mix. It has to be, on the one hand, uh, a virtuous helix uh, between public, private, and academic uh, stakeholders. We have to look at the thing from that perspective. <clears throat> but also, we have to ensure that our economy is able to uh, adapt and grow and, and attract the skills. Um, in Copenhagen Airport, all the signs in the airport are in Danish, English, Japanese, and Chinese. You know, we, we, we make it very hard for Chinese people to come into this country. So we have to look at that. Um, but uh, I, I think as well that we have to build on the successes. There are phenomenal successes here. The IT sector in Ireland is one of the great success stories uh, of the idea, as I mentioned already. But the skill shortage uh, cannot be solved by academia alone. I agree with you.